Thank you, Neera. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for standing by. On behalf of Access Capital, a warm welcome to the Q4 and financial year 2020 earnings call of CDSL India Limited. Uh, these are challenging times, and uh, during these crises, we hope that you, your families, and colleagues are well and healthy. Uh, on the call today, uh, we have the management of CDSL represented by Mr. Nehal Vora, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Girish Amesara, CFO, Mr. Sunil Alvarez, Chief Operating Officer, CDSL Ventures Limited, Mr. Swarup Gothi, VP, and Mr. Nilesh Kitur, Assistant Vice President. I shall now hand over the phone to uh, Nehal sir for his opening remarks, post which we will open the floor for q and Thank you and uh, over to you sir. So, uh, first of all, I would really like to thank really Access Capital for this call. Uh, I'm wishing, uh, I would, uh, I would really like to wish everybody a very, uh, uh, basically a very good morning and a good afternoon wherever you are. I welcome you all to the quarterly conference call for the year ending and the fourth quarter ended, uh, March 31, 2020. And I trust each, uh, and I trust really basically each of you and your loved ones are safe in these extremely difficult times. The depository services was categorized as an essential service, and these testing times, CDSL and its employees have represented strong resiliency and ability to adopt to the changing circumstances. The health and the well-being of our employees, investors, and all our stakeholders is of utmost importance to us, along with the business continuity and CDSL has continued to perform all its operations under these very, very difficult circumstances. Basically, our efforts in these challenging times has to grow and strengthen our business. We request all our investors to move to a digital mode where the transactions can go through even in these uh, times. And uh, CDSL's EZS continues to operate without compromising uh, on the health or security of the DP operations. Basically, in our effort to support the country in its battle against this novel pandemic, CDSL has contributed a sum of 6.8 crores towards the ongoing relief efforts by the central government and the state government. On the business side, during the last financial year, the number of active beneficial owner accounts with CDSL has increased to 2.12 crore as on March 31st, 2020, from 1.74 crore as on March 31st, 2019, which indicates a growth of around 22%. During the quarter ended March 31st, 2020, the active beneficial owner accounts of 14.96 lakhs were added as compared to 9.2 lakhs for the quarter ended December 31st, 2019 and 6.61 lakhs for the quarter ended March 31st, 2019. Basically, as on March 31st, 2020, CDSL has 599 depository participants offering depository participant services from over 20,000 locations across the country, representing about 94% of the PIN codes. These depository participants comprise of hearing members, banks, custodians, and non-banking finance companies. The securities of almost all listed companies have been admitted with CDSL for DMAT. Further, a large number of private limited and unlisted companies are also admitted with CDSL. As on March 31st, 2020, the securities of 14,762 companies have been admitted for DMAT with CDSL. During the last 12 months, the volume of securities under custody has increased by about 26%. I now hand over the call to the Chief Financial Officer, Shik Girish Hamisera, to take you through our financial performance. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I will just uh, brief through the financial performance that we have uh, uh, gone through uh, for the year ended uh, March uh, 2020 and quarter ended March 2020. The total income on a consolidated basis for the year ended March 31st 2020 has increased by rupees 38.80 crores, which is representing 16% to rupees 284.25 crores from the previous year uh, income of 245.45 crores. The net profit after tax on a consolidated basis for the year ended March 31st, 2020 is Rs. 106.72 crores, 
compared to 114.83 crores for the year ended March 31st 2019 total income on a stand alone basis for the year ended March 31st 2020 has increased by rupees 22.92 crores representing 12% increase to rupees 211.39 crores from the previous year uh, uh, income of 188.47 crores the net profit after tax on a stand alone basis for the year ended march 31st 2020 is at rupees 77.32 crores compared to rupees 84.38 crores for the year ended march 31st 2019 uh, it may be noted that the consolidated and stand alone profits have decreased mainly on account of provision for a non recurring previous year's anticipated statutory liability of is 10.56 crores uh, contribution towards csr expenditure of uh, rupees 6.80 crores which includes rupees 4.17 crores of unspent amount of previous years and a legal provision of rupees 1.79 crores pertaining to an outcome of previous years legal matters uh, the consistent income growth is a reward for the core values that the company believes in of being convenient secure and dependable the dip in the prof- net profit is a result of non recurring expenses arising out of legacy issues we want to send out a very clear message that we are strongly committed to the core principle of transparency and good governance as per the framework prescribed by the government and the regulators now i request uh, Sri, uh, sunil alwaris to give an update about our operation of our wholly owned subsidiary cdsl ventures limited over to you sunil hello good morning everybody uh, so far as cdsl ventures is concerned the total income uh, was 68.81 crores has again 51.58 crores that is an increase of 30% of 15.22 crores in this year uh, however the overall expenses in, uh, increased from 15.59 crores to an increase of almost 13 crores that is of uh, up to 90% uh, based on this the profit after tax okay worked out to 36.42 crores has against uh, 35.72 crores uh, the uh, the increase in expenses were uh, uh, mostly related to uh, the uh, the increase in the kyc is process so the charges towards that secondly is the inter kra charges that is uh, whatever we fetch from other kras the expenses towards that and third is uh, the expenses towards the psel project so the psel project uh, there was an ex- uh, provision here of about 6 and a half crores uh, we would also like to mention so far as the kyc registration are concerned Uh, in this financial year it had uh, as of 31st march it was 2.16 crores has against 1.88 crores that was a growth of 29 lakh kyc in this calendar year which is a growth of 15% we are also doing the ckyc processing for uh, for other companies uh, uh, so that they can uh, submit their kyc right where we uh, this year we process 11.42 lakh kyc as against 2.29 lakh kyc last year which was a growth of 291% uh, so far as the rta business is concerned we have been registered with 402 rtas as of 31st march as against 121 uh, companies as of 31st march 2019 which is a growth of 281 companies or 230% so far as the gsp that is the gsp suvidha service provider is concerned we have processed 200 uh, 277 lakh uh, transactions has against 259 lakh transactions which is a growth of 7% and finally coming to the nat project we have uh, registered 619 uh, academic institutions has against 527 uh, academic institutions has of 31st march 2019 also we had uh, good number of awards which were uploaded about 2.83 crore awards uploaded into the system having in 1.04 crore awards uploaded last year and uh, three 13.2 a total of as of 31st march 2020 13.27 lakh students were registered as against 2.7 lakh students which were registered at 31st march 2019 uh, one adverse news is that the uh, 
the NAT project has been handed over to DigiLocker, and both the depositories will no longer be handling it going forward. So that is all from my side. Uh, if there's a question, we'd like to take them. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchscreen telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one. John. First question is from the line of Prakash Kaparia from from Anvit Portfolio Management Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Couple of questions. So, if I look at our financial performance for FI twenty, this is the second year in a row where you know EBITDA growth is negative. Even if I adjust for you know some of the expenses which you know Girish uh, mentioned in terms of you know. increase csr contribution legal provision so and you know we've seen a decent revenue growth this year so you know going forward for fy21 will you know revenue and ebitda both be positive for us what is our sense and what will drive this and you know on the unlisted space if you could give us some you know insights into what were one time activation fees recurring revenues and the revenue breakup for Q4 in terms of our uh, major heads that will be helpful. So, uh, let's see. Can I take the question? Uh, and I'll hand it over to Girish. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, in terms of um, as uh, we are aware, uh, we have a new management team which has joined uh, around uh, the half year mark. So, around October, we have a new board. uh so the entire structure has uh, the management structure has changed uh if you kind of add back the legacy items uh to the expenses it uh, kind of uh, has a two fold impact that uh, had those been incurred in those years the profits uh, comparison would have been lower and if you do what if uh, the profits for the current year would be higher than the previous year That's number one. Number two, uh, I think the important uh, metrics which should be seen is the number of accounts which are getting enrolled. This year has been a landmark year for CDSL on two counts. One is that basically uh, we have uh, crossed our competition and number of payment accounts open, and there seems it continues to be a robust growth there. Uh, and the second is basically the we are the only depository in the International Finance Center, which has been permitted to uh, start a branch. Um, so there is definitely growth, and as this pandemic uh, is uh, basically uh, coming, uh, there is going to be new paradigms of doing business. So the online digital mode is going to be the way forward, and that's where we see a lot of our. Um, a lot of a core of business uh, which will continue to which is basically expected to grow uh, the other important thing is that we have 599 depository participants so in terms of the distribution reach we are at 92% of the pin codes our competition is around 280 depository participants uh, so i think that distribution reach is also going to be extremely critical uh we have a lot of connectivity and volumes coming from tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 towns where there is expected to be more of growth and therefore in these uh, times uh, we would uh, really uh, hope and expect uh, that uh, the growth will continue however this is based on lot of extraneous factors also on how the pandemic really Ends out in the country, but at least from the way things have been going on, that the securities market has continued even despite the pandemic, and it's considered to be an essential service. We expect this growth to continue. 
And the second part of the question and request as CFO, she managed to answer that. Nehal, what when you are referring to you know some of the management changes, it is the employee structure and revision is what you know you are hinting at, which is also a big uh, contributor to cost in this year. Yeah, that had happened prior to me joining. This was uh, in the first of April. It was the first from first of April, 2020. I joined in September 10. Uh, the, what I was referring is to uh, we have a new CFO, CTO. and uh, md and ceo so uh, three core management team uh, members have changed in this year in the second half of this year and the entire board uh, composition has also changed so there has been a significant management change which has happened at this cds as well and and you know to the point of which you know obviously you've been uh, leaders in terms of you know the account opening and you know we've overtaken nsd are also so you know when do some of these changes translate into more steady state revenue what i'm trying to understand is you know the activation cycle what will kick start some of these account because you know we've been uh, very aggressive and you know kadus uh, to the management team for you know adding so many accounts in such a time period so will it be you know some kind of an ipo because what we read is you know volumes are going up in capital market so when the typical activation cycle would be what 6 months 1 year and when do you know some of these initiatives lead to more steady state higher revenues for us see i think uh, this will be dependent on the market on how they are going to use it our expectation is as more and more people are going to enroll in search into the demand mode also there are more and more assets which are expected to move into the demand mode there is obviously going to translate into a uh, more amount of transactions being done through the demand but uh, how that will transfer is a futuristic statement and i would really uh, not like to comment on it at this point of time uh, our uh, our core is to present the facts the way they are and the hope in which we really expect this to go going forward uh whether this will translate or not is is it something which you and i we both will have to see as the situation unfolds sure uh girish here just to answer your question on the ebitda margin uh if we were to add back those earlier ex- earlier year expenses which are debited to this profit and loss account this year uh i think then you will see in positive ebitda If I adjust, you know that 68 million and the legal provision, it, it still comes to negative. Obviously, the so we so I will just give a break up. Uh, we I if you remember in uh, December quarter we had charge of rupees 10.56 crores towards earlier year service tax payment, right? And uh, we have paid earlier year CSR expenditure of a tune of around four crores. and legal provision of around uh, roughly around uh, 2 crores so you add up all this expenditure and uh, add back to the ebitda you will see a positive ebitda okay. these are all non recurring expenditure which are, which has to be incurred during this year uh, to sort out all issues okay. yeah 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 and just to put give us the revenue break up of the major heads uh, for this quarter sure 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 i will uh, you want a quarter or you want a... whatever whatever is available okay. right okay 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 i will just i will i will give you a, a quarter a quarter wise revenue break up for uh, march quarter on a consolidated basis so our annual issue uh, charge income is 33% of our total operating income uh, transaction charge is 21% of uh, total operating income uh online uh, data charges which are uh, largely from uh, our subsidiary is around 19% uh, ipo corporate exchange charges is around 12% of our operating income uh, statement that we deliver to the investor bios is around 4% of our total income uh, document storage and ekyc each contribute 2% so if you if you add up all these things uh, it will constitute to around 94% of our total operating income so this is the constituent of our main operating income i hope i have answered your query sure and the last question from my side is you know the nad which is being you know transferred to digi locker 
were we paid any one time revenue by the government on this and you know what is our uh, government business contribution to these uh, revenues on an annual basis and are we still continuing with the government project or not that's the last question for my uh, on ned i i doubt government had not paid any any revenue to us and uh, on that operation question i will ask sunil to answer those questions yeah just a minute yeah yeah so far as the uh, nad is concerned the government uh, we, we had to provide the services free of cost up to november that was in the contract and post that they had reviewed the contract and then awarded to digi locker uh, they will uh, I, i do not think the government will be paying us anything for uh, you know the for executing the project and uh, so far as the government project is concerned uh, if you consider the uh, uh, current project which we are doing for uh, for the regulator for processing of the things one company then that is about nine and a half crores so that was income in that project in this particular year as again the expenses were of about six and a half crores sorry your voice was cracking so in nine and a half crores you said is the contribution for the whole year from the government project that's correct yes yes nine and a half crores and and yes. you incurred an expense of around six and a half crores was six and a half crores yes that's true that's true yes. thank you Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Varun Goenka from the Lands Nepal Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yes. Good morning, sir. I have uh, three questions. So, first, uh, on this NAD project, could you help us understand under what circumstances or what uh, decision uh, backdrop was it? transferred uh, from the depositories and is there any other projects which are under consideration uh, to receive or to be uh, transferred so um, basically could you ask all the three questions it will be easier to answer them okay okay and secondly on the ekyc that we have received uh, how does that change our business or Uh, how does that impact us and third i think every 5 years we receive some kind of a uh, issuer charge hike uh, and we have to go to sebi if you could help us uh, with where does that uh, lie today what's the status of that so i think first of question sunil could you answer and then okay, i'll uh, take the third question yeah the, so far as the nad is concerned uh, we uh, we had a contract for 3 years from the government and post the post the contract the government is supposed to about the mhrd was supposed to review the performance of the work and uh, then give an extension of the contract after they uh, the, the uh, they did a review of the deposit case it was done by iit professor based on which there was a two sub committees appointed by the actor and both the uh, committees or uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you uh, yeah uh, sir sorry your voice is breaking just a moment sir uh, participants please stay connected Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected. I'll be joining Mr. Abhishek to take the call. Thank you. Hello. Uh, sir, Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Okay, two 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 It was given to us. We were informed that Digi Locker will be the only depository. Uh, so far as the EKYC business is concerned, we were already providing the services prior to the Supreme Court verdict. Of course, that services were suspended. We had almost two uh, hundred and fifty odd intermediaries who were availing of the EKYC services. So, uh, uh, so far as the EKYC business is concerned, we are one of the intermediaries who have been. uh you know permitted to take up the aukuu license 
and we have at the same time also received an EKY army sign license from the CCA. So both of this put together is definitely related to the online account opening as well as add to the number of KYC Hello. into the pair. Hello. So both the EKYC and the e sign will definitely facilitate online account opening and add to the number of accounts in CDSL as well as the KYCs in CVS. So as uh, regards the third question uh, about the issuer fees being increased every five years, um, uh, yes, five years have lapsed, but given the pandemic, I don't know what's going to be because the charges have to be approved by uh, uh, SEBI. And uh, given that there are uh, a general mode of reducing charges all over, I don't uh, know how that's going to pan out in terms of the increase of charges. So that is something which we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, it'll be a joint application made by both the NSDL and CDSL to SEBI. And uh, based on that, uh, they will take a call whether it should be increased or not. So we can go on to the next question, please. Hello. Yes, sir, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, sir. yes, yes. So uh, this the, the question on NAT project, the voice was not clear. Uh, just to circle back once more on that, he, uh, are there any other projects also where uh, the government feels that uh, the output or delivery is probably suboptimal, uh, that we need to increase any kind of uh, volumes there? Uh, if you could help us on the same measurement. See, I think uh, basically the government's push is to move towards a digital mode uh, and, the, and basically the depository is the best equipped to kind of take forward this particular, this particular thought of uh, the central government. And uh, there are various, uh, the various areas which they are looking at, uh, but it's all at uh, the planning stage uh it's not yet been firmed up but given this uh this particular issue about the virus which has happened it's only businesses which have been able to move an online mode have continued to uh have continued to grow or continue to uh have their business going on while the virus is on so i think that's a clear cut indication that uh, the push is going to be to move more to move really more and more into this kind of uh, mode uh, Fair enough, any, major, uh, any major any uh, major capex plans or investment plans for us sir, that is on the board uh, so basically the software technology is one area which we would continue to grow because the backbone of uh, CDSL is its technology uh, cyber security is also continues to remain an area of focus for us uh, and so we will continue to basically invest in technology as we go forward. Uh, so basically we'll see how it pans out, but this is going to be a focus area. Any uh, quantification of how much amount are we looking to invest in the next two years? Uh, we have not yet firmed up. That is yet under being discussed and deliberated at the level of the board. So we have not firmed that up. As soon as we firm that up, we will be uh, making whenever it is due, we will surely be in informing people. Sure. Thank you, sir. I'll come back to the queue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of the Shera from Lucky Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, on that one off charge uh, or one off expenses which have flowed in in FY20 and quarter four, I just want to clarify a couple of things. So uh, we have mentioned that for FY20, there is a 10.5 crore on service settlement, 7 crore on CSR, and a legal provision of 1.7 crore. Uh, until quarter three, uh, there was a bad debt provision also which was taken and was classified as one off. Uh, so just want to clarify, is that number and whatever that number is, is it a one off or it is no more a relevant one off for FY20? And what is the one-off in quarter of four expense? Because uh, the number for your other expense shoots up from. Uh, 
ആയത് ഫ്രോം ടെൻ ക്രോസ് ടു ട്വന്റി ക്രോസ് what uh, what we have informed uh, in the presentation is that uh, service tax uh, and uh, csr uh, of uh, unspent amount of csr of previous year are one of the uh, items which uh, we had to spend during this financial year uh, on uh, provision for uh, bad and doubtful debts now that is a function of uh, you know collection mechanism and uh, based and it is also depending upon the uh, uh, market scenario at the customer end level so uh, you know during this pandemic situation uh, the overall collection is is not that fast as what every each and every company must have desired you must be also experiencing that uh, payments are coming uh, uh, with a delayed uh, uh, so time frame i want to intervene here so that that i just want to intervene here i am answering i am answering your question i am i am coming to that only so uh, uh, when we say bad debts bad debts uh, uh, would be required to be provided for uh, based on on the criteria specified in the accounting standard based on the collection history now if there is an overlapping uh, uh, collection suppose the our collection is 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 delayed then there will be provision prescribed under the accounting standard that's how it works so uh, yes uh, on an average uh, our provision will work out to around uh, uh, 8 to 9% of our total uh, uh, invoicing that we do for uh, any financial year uh, because that's uh, uh, what it is based on our uh, recovery uh, ratio that we have right now so uh, bad debts provision for bad debts uh, will continue to happen on, on a quarter to quarter basis that's the reason we have not said that it is a uh, non recurring expenditure i hope i have answered your question okay so uh, is it possible to just mention then what was the bad debt number provisioning number for fy 20 and what is it for fy 19 if you have the two numbers you want to uh, finish your wife right Ah, full year. I am asking all full year numbers. Yes, I want. Let me let me give you that number. And for quarter four, what is the ah. specific one off? So that CSR spend number flows in in quarter four. The entire one off number in quarter four because your yes yes yes, yes. A, a one off is CSR is totally uh, in uh, quarter four. So seven uh, crores, right? Or it's about 7 crores you mentioned yes yes roughly 7 crores so uh, to answer your uh, provision uh, question on provision uh, the provision for uh, bad debts is around 7 uh, and half crores in the financial year uh, 2020 uh, ending march uh, 2020 and correspondingly uh, uh, the provision made during last year was roughly around 3 crores this explains one thing yeah is there any other one off in quarter 4 barring the 7 crores csr so uh, in, you are asking for quarter or your full year quarter, quarter four so quarter in the in the march quarter the uh, one off is uh, uh, csr spent and uh, a provision made towards uh, legal matter oh, okay. of uh, earlier year okay even that flows in in quarter four okay. yes 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 okay. this explains one part and uh, another question i want to know the fy20 absolute revenue mix if you could give uh, which is uh, your uh, transaction charge issuer charge corporate action kyc for full year okay okay so full uh, full financial year the annual issuer charge related full financial year can call it sure 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 i will give i will give so uh, uh, annual issuer charge income for the full financial year uh, march 2020 is uh, 77 uh, 77 crores 77 and half and half crores transaction charge is around 43 crores uh, online data charges is around 37 crore Uh, IPO and corporate action charges is around 23 crores. Uh, How is that? Online data and then you mentioned IPO corporate action charges. That is how much? Uh, 23 crores. Okay. Uh, SEBI project on PSL uh, is around nine and a half crore. Uh, statement that we deliver cash charges is around uh, uh, around nine crores. Mm-hmm. Uh, EKYC CKYC charges is around four uh, crore. uh document storage charges is around uh, 5 crore uh, e voting charges is around 3 uh, uh, and a half crore and uh, i think this covers almost 94% of our income perfect and the additional year the corporate action uh, yes. is the only uh, is the only uh, revenue item which gets influenced for fy21 as of now 
Yes. Right, because that yes. is linked to your IPO and all. IPO, sir. Yes, yes, yes. So, will this be largely IPO corporate action, or it will be IPO split and all? It would things? be yes. It would be it would be mixture of all the uh, active corporate action that a company does. Okay. So, as of now, what gets affected as a line item is basically the corporate action, right? Yes. Because transaction charge is linked to market volume. Issuer charges mm. is linked to the number of companies that you probably add in the system as well. Yes. Yes. KYC is linked to your financial uh, instrument, uh, you know, in the mutual funds and insurance yes. and all those, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this explains. Uh, do you have any uh, outlook on how much reduction the corporate action might take in FR21? If there is uh, no no, we don't give any futuristic uh, numbers, so this will be again dependent on the market. Uh, so it will be difficult to predict. But in a market year like this, uh, does it, uh, you know, go down by half? And See, almost... again, I'm telling you, you are asking the same question in a okay. different form. Uh, okay. The point is that it's a basically a futuristic question. It will be uh, difficult to answer that. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A request to all the participants, please restrict to one question per participant. If time permits, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. Next question is from the line of Yash Nehrukar from PPSAS. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes. 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 Uh, I hope everyone's uh, well and safe. So I just had a couple of questions. So firstly, I just wanted to get like proper sense about the NED project. So we spend like almost a year, uh, you know, spending like the expenditure and doing everything, you know, building up the whole network of institutions, uh, registering the students, and then the entire project moves on to digital locker. So that was, uh, you know, it was expected that, you know, that will generate some revenue, you know, the open additional lines of revenues for the company. But since that entire project, since it has moved to digital locker, so that the revenue chunk will just be gone. So, is there anything else on your mind which, you know, going forward, which uh, would open the revenue lines, any other product, any other strategy which uh, is in the pipeline? Yeah, so, so we are expecting... One minute, Sunil. Uh, just, Sunil, one minute. Just can you finish all your questions so that, uh, you know, as the as a person said, you would like to restrict it to one uh, question per person. So, basically, sure, sure. everybody has a fair chance. Sure. So, secondly, I just wanted to get a uh, clear sense about the KYC thing. I, I just missed it uh, in your opening remarks. Uh, like, what was it about the KYC which you were talking about, uh, you know, like, uh, that you are processing for other companies? So, these are the only two questions, Chad. Hey, can you come again on your second question? It's about uh, the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so in the opening remarks, you mentioned something about the CKYC or the EKYC. So, just have to clear out whatever the numbers were. Okay. Okay. So as far as uh, so far, so far, and anyway, there's so there was no income, uh, you know, uh, generated by books by an ad last year. Okay, and we were expecting some income to come in to come in from the NAD project this year. Still, the project went to Digi Locker. Uh, to compensate for that, we are looking at the project from. Uh, EKYC, where we'll be registered as an AUA, KUA with uh, with uh, UIDI, where we will enable investors to do on KYC. The second project we are looking at is becoming an e-sign service provider. As you are aware that the SEBI has made it mandatory for all investors to e-sign their documents when they make an online uh, application for either booking or DMAT. And the third part is we also have an online account opening service which we will be providing. So we hope that once licenses are in place, that it will make up for the income what we would have, you know, got from the NAT project. All right. So any expenditure done, uh, so that will just be kind of a sunk cost or uh, so, far, so, so far, uh, NAT project is concerned. Yes, there is. Uh, it is already there is already a sunk cost. I mean. For a period of uh, 10 years, so maybe, uh, maybe our CFO would be able to handle that question uh, better. And uh, most of the expenses have come over the last three years. So, so, 
so to answer your question head on it's just that all the costs have been done at some cost uh, it was just a revenue which was expected and now that would win so i think that has been answered by sunil in terms of uh, how we are proposing to go forward right thank you next question is from the line of kunal sangvi from banyan tree investment and sorry banyan trade advisor please go ahead yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh, so uh, in terms of you know that a price hike uh, you know with from the same board depositories were you know expected to apply this year just wanted to you know have a historical background on you know uh, previous increases i understand that last increase that we took was in 2015 can you quantify for me like uh, what kind of you know increase were taken say in 2005 and 10 that would be my first question and uh, second question would be on the you know the uh, opportunity in the unlisted uh, you know security side uh, i understand that you know uh, i had two questions there one is what is the opportunity left in terms of you know unlisted public companies uh, what is the target market left and second is uh, i understand there was some incentive structure you know where nsdl was better than cdsl and that you know resulted into uh, nsdl gaining market share now how we are placed with rnta you know in terms of uh, the incentive structure and what 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 we think about it like how we plan to gain market share there so basically the first one i'll answer second one i'll request yogesh uh, to answer that question uh the first question on when on 2005 10 15 uh, is where the uh, price increase has happened i think uh, there is no particular trend in which uh, that increases so i don't think that's going to really matter in terms of going forward what steady sees is the current market conditions before they approve on any kind of uh, increase in the charges and as i have stated before uh, the virus conditions is something which we'll have to see how it pans out whether sebi will be very agreeable for that price increase to happen so it is not a trend which can be put in that every five years uh, so much percent increase has happened it depends on the facts and circumstances which have been presented and therefore it is also not put down that every 5 years the increase would happen it could happen in 3 years it could happen in more than 5 years uh, it is basically on the facts and circumstances which uh, uh, are there at that point of time when the particular thing is put up to study so the second part of the question jogesh if you could answer those just yeah you guess yeah yeah you guess here see see there are close to about 80000 companies in the unlisted space out of that approximately 11000 have been admitted uh, till now uh, the balance are to be admitted uh, but uh, what mca guideline says is that if there is corporate action or any transfer then it is mandatory to do it in the dmat form that is first part the second part which you asked was of the uh, incentive or the referral fee structure so we have uh, actually matched uh, the referral fee structure of the other depository and now uh, you know we are also also offering the same referral fee to rts as well as to the practicing company secretaries also and uh, so that is what is uh, i hope i have answered sure sure thank you thank you next question is from the line of sushil from jm financial please go ahead yeah hi this is ashutosh uh, just wanted to know how is the business been during the lockdown both in terms of revenues and whether uh, we have taken any uh, you know special cost uh, line items also during the lockdown especially in terms of it spend so uh i think i will have to restrict it to up to 31st march because the lockdown has continued after that uh, the purpose of our call is uh, to discuss the results up to 31st march uh up to 31st march uh, the business has really uh, been uh, the way it has been going on on so many months there has been no major impact seen in the month of march uh, as can be seen from our quarterly results also for the fourth uh, for the q4 and in terms of the technology cost it continues to remain uh, within our uh, standards there is nothing which is coming really is being out of tune it is in line and in sync with what we normally spend 
Thank you. Thank you. A request to all the participants. Please restrict it to one question for participants. Next question is from the line of Amit Chanda from ICIC Security. Please go ahead. Hello. That is Amit Chandra from SDFC Security. And uh, yes. sir, thanks for the opportunity. And sir, uh, my question is related to the annual issue of charges. So, in FY20, roughly we had the rate of around 170, 170 companies per month. So, you know, which is half of what the competition is adding. So, you know, as you explained that we have the incentive structure and so maybe we can see some increase there. So, so, my question is related to, you know, what has been this rate, you know, in the last uh, last two months during the lockdown period, have you seen significant uh, significant drop in this number? And also for F20, if you can state the uh, you know, contribution from the unlisted companies in the annual issue of charges, and if you break up between one-time restriction charges and the annuity part, it will be you know very useful. And the second question is on the uh, you know uh, approval that we you know that we got from SEBI for the Aadhaar based KYC. So what is the change in the process uh, uh, you know, post this for onboarding of a client and uh, to what extent it could boost the you know, KYC volumes? Thank you. So on the first one, uh, we'll have to restrict it again up to March 31st. Uh, uh, so I'll ask Yogesh to uh, just give a sense. Uh, and uh, second part in terms of the transaction charges are either charges make up uh, to the extent I'll ask the CFO Girish to reply to that. And on the third one, Sunil, if you could uh, answer on that, EKYC. So basically, you wish could you answer the first question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, correct. Up to 31st March, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, as I answered the previous participants' query also, uh, last year also, uh, we have also started the referral fee structure and, uh, and due to that, due to uh, registrar and transfer agents as well as the practicing company secretary. So we have been also, you know, gradually gaining market share. So it's close to about 30% that, uh, you know, uh, companies we have also admitted. Uh, that is till 31st of March. Uh, what was your other question? Please. Uh, uh, sir, uh, the contribution from the unlisted companies to annual issue charges for FK20. Yeah, so that's that's Amit, Amit, roughly around 16 lakhs has been uh, contributed by the unlisted company during the the quarter ended smart 20. This is for the full year amount in FK20. Let me come back on this, Amit. Okay, and sir. Uh, uh, this uh, this contribution would also also include the one time registration charges and the annuity part also right yes yeah so uh, okay sir i will i will i will you know i will get back yeah. to you yeah yeah and for the aadhar based ekyc yes yeah. sudhi if you could answer that yeah so far as the aadhar based ekyc is concerned we are fairly bullish on that because in the last uh, couple of months, what we have seen is you know, most of the accounts are getting opened online. And uh, once the other just uh, EKY is in place, uh, it will make it, uh, it'll make it much more easier for an investor to open an account. And we are fairly bullish that it will add to a substantial number of accounts through this vertical, uh, especially when we have eSign as well as our own online account opening product in place. Uh, does that okay. answer? Uh, okay, okay, sir. Thanks. Amit, thanks. Amit, Amit, for the full year, the income is around 2.24 crores. Okay. 2.24 crores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Chakun Damania from Corex Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Sir, just wanted to carry on with the question the earlier participant asked regarding the number of companies. So you can help us in understanding what was the number of companies that has been added in the unlisted page in entire FY20 and what the total count stands as of now for us. Okay. So I think uh, the CFO Girish could answer that. Can you just give that number? How many have been added uh, in the... So uh, during... 
during during the financial year during the financial ended march 2020 the number of companies added is uh, around 2120 companies and uh, total i i need to get back on the total companies okay so during so during the financial what will be the annuity charges that has been recovered or the, or the one time registered entry that uh, that could have been recovered from this 2000 odd companies that have been registered Okay, I had answered that to uh, earlier question. It is around two point two four crore. Okay, the two point two four. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So just need that total number of companies that has been admitted. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Gautam Gupta. Bainasi, please go ahead. uh good morning sir thank you for the opportunity uh you know first let me thank you also for the investor presentation i think you know we've been asking for it and this is the first time it's come up a lot of useful data that gets answered i hope we can see this maybe every quarter so i think that will yes, also sure. save time on the call so thanks for that yes. yeah uh yeah. and uh, the question that i had was one uh, on the commodity repository side if you could give us any color in terms of progress how that is panning out and to on whether that uh, government project whether we are seeing a phase two happening or not that's it so on the commodity repository uh, it's uh, currently and basically aggregate commodities is where it has been permitted i think there are discussions the government to move to the non aggregates uh, also uh, so that's something uh, we have to wait and watch how it moves forward and there we we can uh, really contribute a lot more than what we have been contributing so to wait and watch how the rules change uh on the second query i'm sorry your voice broke off what was the second uh, query you know, we had we had the government project that psl one so uh whether we are going to see a phase 2 of that project or not do we have some clarity now or uh... see that is something which continues uh, in terms of an ongoing basis um uh, Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, circumstances. It is difficult to give you a firm answer on that because uh, uh, there are a lot of conditions, ifs and buts, hmm. etc. So I don't want to uh, give a firm answer so, when. Uh, we don't have a direction essentially yet. I mean, a clear direction in that sense. But it's an ongoing process. We'll yeah. Yeah. Right by year, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot for uh, Thank your time. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shri Ram Srinivasan from KSEMA. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, this is Shri Ram Srinivasan. Uh, first of all, congratulations for your numbers. Almost uh, posted 16 percent of growth in this uh, very tough time. So, uh, my hearty congratulations to you. Uh, my query is will be on uh, annual issuer charges side, sir. Uh, actually, we have added almost 2,100 companies during this fiscal. the average run rate will be around 150 to 180 companies that we have been keep on adding every month right uh, so is this the trend can uh, we can expect to continue uh, along for fi21 so again it's a futuristic question but if i can just ask in a answer in a broad basis that as yogesh had mentioned earlier that there is a significant portion of companies which are yet to be enrolled under the uh, dmat mode so whenever the transfers are required to be done or they want to raise capital they will have to come into the dmat mode uh, so the way i would look at it is that there is a significant opportunity of growth and uh, difficult to predict how fi21 is going to pan out because of the virus issue uh, but uh, looking at the core numbers the way they are i would see that the uh, really we should see some growth coming in whether that will be more or less in this financial year or it will turn out in the next financial year with something different uh we will see how it goes okay almost uh, 60000 uh, unlisted companies are likely to uh, are yeah. they right yeah they are around uh, 73000 companies from uh, 3000 companies so it's in big opportunity that we are looking for right yeah yeah sure yeah. uh, in terms of uh, national academic certificates uh, that we have been get approval to get charging for that uh, we have been expected in september but we are got in uh, the um, law end of march actually sir uh, is that uh, can you give me the uh, revenue uh, idea or revenue break up idea for this how we are going to charge and we are how we are going to recover the revenue for this can you brief about that 
Sunil, can you answer that? Yeah, the latest update on this project is that the government has, uh, you know, taken the project from the depositories and given it to the DigiLock. So the depositories okay. will not be handling this project. Okay. Uh, for every login that we have been charging, uh, is that any uh, uh, recording revenue? Uh, uh, what, what I mean to say is that depositories will not be handling this project going forward. As for the yeah. okay, going forward, we are not going to handle the same uh, national nice academy that we just that's right, that's right. Oh, okay, okay, fine, sir, fine, sir, fine, sir. Fine, thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Next question is from the line of Neeraj Kambekar from Prosperity. Please go ahead. Hello, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Currently, PAN is not compulsory for C KYC. But the security market require PAN number and therefore broker and mutual fund use KYC data stored by CVL KRA. However, if CKYC makes PAN number mandatory in their data, then who will use CVL KRA? That is my first question. Second, other than securities market intermediaries, who will use CVL KRA? And last question is how much CVL KRA charge? For one time pitching data. So, yeah. so, can you answer that? Yeah, yeah. So, so far as uh, CVL KRA is concerned, uh, it's only the security market intermediaries who can use the CVL KRA. Uh, point number two, what you mentioned is if uh, PAN number is made mandatory in the SERSI database, uh, who will use the CVL KRA? The point yes. is that. Uh, it is not only the PAN number which matters here, it also matters on the quality of the data. Today what is happening, the intermediaries are able to fetch data, but they are not uh, confident with the type of data they are getting from SERSI because there is no verification done at the SERSI end. Okay? So because of that, many of the intermediaries depend on the KSA data itself. Okay. And uh, what was your third question, sir? TVL KRA will charge for one-time fetching data. Yeah, we charge 35 rupees for fetching a record. Okay. okay. Does that answer all your questions? Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ashish Sood from Vishuddha Capital. Please go ahead. Trinity. So I want to ask question regarding outlook on your insurance business uh, because we are seeing that around 43 crore insurance policy are currently with DigiLocker and is is the reason that there is a pricing difference between the price charged by you from the insurance companies or the price charged by the DigiLocker and in the forward can the same thing happen that government can make uh, DigiLocker mandatory as a one time entity is uh, for all storing the all insurance policy record so outlook yeah. on this business going forward. Uh, so, um, so basically the insurance repository as of now is not a mandatory. I'll ask Mr. Radam Kumar to uh, just give a reply to your answers. Yeah, Ram Kumar here. Or if I may take forward the answer. Uh, the first part of the question was uh, the DG Locker is having uh, X number of policies. As per the present IRDA regulations, only an insurance repository is uh, uh, allowed to hold electronic policies through electronic insurance account. That is one part of the answer. Second part is that on the in the uh, digi locker, what generally people do is they store their policies. So it is not known whether it is really true or not. In case of some companies, digi locker has got a back to back arrangement, but not in case of all the insurance companies. That is part two of the first question. But uh, the second question that you asked was whether government will in future say that everything will be through DigiLocker. That is only time will tell. We will not be able to comment on that as of now. Okay. So and who will handle the question? Okay. And is the pricing difference between the price charged by uh, DigiLocker from insurance company and price charged by you or the pricing is same? My understanding is, uh, sir, if I may, Mr. MD, if I may just continue the answering. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So my uh, understanding is DigiLocker uh, doesn't charge uh, anybody for anything and they can well afford to do so. But we are a commercial organization. To that extent, we will not be able to give anything free, point number one. Point number two is if you compare our cost with the cost of printing a policy and dispatching it or handing it over to the policy holder, ours is uh, much less than that. 
that i hope answers your question yeah, okay sure thanks thank you very much ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was the last question for today i will now hand the conference over to mr adit bagal for closing comments yeah so uh, thank you everyone for taking out the time uh, and attending this call special thanks to uh, nehal sir and the entire team at uh, cdsl for patiently answering our questions uh, nehal sir i'll hand it over to you for any closing remarks so uh, i would uh, sincerely thank all of you for your questions uh, one uh, comment which uh, a brother compliment which we got that we have put in our uh, uh, numbers in form of a presentation we shall be doing that uh, going forward in in basically in basically every such quarter so you all can look forward to that and uh, we are basically hopeful that uh, with these current tough times our uh, business continues to grow and uh, basically our basically our effort is there of all the stakeholders to ensure that the business of cds continues to go on forward thank you sir thank you, thank you very much on behalf of access capital limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines